she's back and better than ever. The triumphant return of Guy Ladriel. Come on, show your support for Guy Ladriel. Come on, come on. We need to show our support for Guy Ladriel. Get excited, everyone. <laughs> hey, hey, now, that's not nice. Come on, they'll call us horrible names if we don't support Guy Ladriel. You don't want that, do you? I can't have so I can't. I want to tell you all a story about a young lady I used to know back in my youth. I was the one that gave her her nickname, Valkyrie. As her nickname implies, Valkyrie looked like she'd stepped off of a Molly Hatchet album cover or the cover of a fantasy novel. I'm six foot in my cowboy boots. When she would stand next to me, I would have to look up to make eye contact, something I worked very hard at maintaining because what was at eye level were pretty big and really nice. As we say in Southern Missouri, she was built like a brick house. We're talking fit. You could have bounced a quarter off of one of her girls. And that's not conjecture. I saw another woman do it one time. And as you all can kind of get the idea, she had no problem showing off what she had. I met Valkyrie during my security days. If you pissed off Valkyrie, she'd knock your teeth down your throat. Men, women, didn't matter. Valkyrie liked to fight and she was good at it. One day, a bunch of my friends decided it'd be really funny to wind me up and convince me that Valkyrie was looking for me to settle a score. So when she came power walking towards me, I about shit my pants. Even with my background in training, I wasn't sure I could take her in a fair fight. Add on top of that, I've never hit a woman in my life. I thought I was about to get my ass kicked. Fortunately, she was in on it too. There was another time I got sent to deal with an incident that went south really fast. I was dealing with a couple of idiots when this guy came up behind me, malice in his heart. I had just started to realize somebody was behind me and what their intentions were when Valkyrie came flying in, took the guy down and beat the living crap out of him. I was put in the weird position. I had to save this fool's life. By the time I pulled Valkyrie off of him, he didn't know his own name. Why am I telling you about Valkyrie? Two reasons. First, there are badass women capable of kicking ass and taking names. When Valkyrie walked in the room, anybody with any amount of common sense, and y'all would be surprised how many people don't have that basic level of common sense, but anybody who had any basic level of common sense would realize this was a dangerous woman, somebody you did not want to mess with. The second reason why I tell you all about Valkyrie, she always had men, women too, but she always had men circling her like a moth to a flame. Why? She was sexy. She was a badass, but more importantly, she was still feminine. Once you became Valkyrie's friend, she would do anything in the world for you, like put somebody in the hospital. It wasn't easy to earn Valkyrie's trust to become her friend, but once you did, she became incredibly caring, loving, and nurturing. And she was very public in how she felt about her friends. The whole world got to see this other softer, feminine side of Valkyrie. Once you got to know Valkyrie, you quickly realized that when she knocked the teeth down somebody's throat, that's not just a turn of phrase. More often than not, she was standing up for a friend. It just so happens that Valkyrie had the size, strength, skills, and the willingness to use all those to where she could kick the crap out of a large percentage of men. Beautiful face, hot body, loving, nurturing nature, and a badass? A lot of men find that combination irresistible. Now, Valkyrie and I were never romantically involved. Her and her friend were way too wild for my taste. But I'm here to tell you, scantily clad, wild-eyed Amazon, willing to put somebody in the hospital to protect you? That's hot. Last few years, modern intersectional theory keeps insisting men are just intimidated by strong, powerful, independent women. No, it's all in the presentation. As the famous architect Mies van der Rohe is credited with saying, devil's in the details. 
My friend Valkyrie represents an extreme in one type of feminine power. Valkyrie's badassery doesn't come from a desire to dominate, control, bend people to her will. It comes from her nurturing nature, her desire to take care of those she loves. Just so happens she's an Amazon with poor people skills. All the way at the other end of the spectrum of feminine power, you find Lady Galadriel. Fighting is beneath Galadriel's dignity. She has no need to dominate or control. People willingly choose to listen to her, willingly choose to follow her, willingly choose to step up and die for her. Think about this for a moment. If Sauron had come knocking on Galadriel's door, every single elf in Lothlorien, including her husband, would willingly die to protect Galadriel. Now, I don't know about y'all, but where I come from, that's called power. Whether we're talking about Valkyrie or Galadriel, modern intersectional theory hates them both. They both derive their power from their femininity. And as far as modern intersectional theory is concerned, the only legitimate power is masculine power. They want women to be dudes with boobs. The rings of power are modern intersectional theory's opportunity to assassinate Gladriel, destroy her feminine power, and replace it with masculine power. Intentions were declared before season one even started. We were introduced to Gladriel, badass warrior woman, hear me roar. In season one, we saw Guy Ladriel strutting around in armor, kicking ass and taking names. You know, she can kill a nice troll in under 10 seconds. The audience rejected Guy Ladriel out of hand. Part of the reason? Modern intersectional theory doesn't understand masculine power. What they are arguing for, how they're presenting Guy Ladriel, is a misunderstanding, misrepresentation, parody of masculine power. Some people don't take rejection well. The writers of the Rings of Power got their little old feelings hurt. How dare the audience reject our arguments, reject our agenda. They're out for payback. You want feminine power? Okay, we'll give you feminine power, but we're going to subvert it, twist it, distort it, pervert it to the point that it becomes so disgusting and foul no one wants to be associated with it. However, modern intersectional theory says you can never portray a woman in a negative light, ever. And you have to always show a woman in a position of power over men at all times. Oh, the problems of when ideology drives storytelling. In season one, when she's not busy kicking ass and taking names, Guy Ladriel meets Sauron, almost jumps his bones. She brings Sauron back to the elves, helps him come up with a plan to make some magic rings. Nothing could go wrong here. Finds out he's Sauron, lets Sauron go, doesn't tell anybody that the guy that was helping make these magic rings were Sauron, and then has everybody make the rings anyhow. Every bad thing that happens in season two is Guy Ladriel's fault. No, 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 don't you understand? A woman can't be portrayed in a negative light. It has to be a man's fault, somehow. In the first three episodes of season two, we got a parody of feminine Galadriel. She's photographed in warm light with soft focus, feminine hair, feminine clothes, and she speaks in a soft, breathy voice using soft-sounding words. In the first three episodes, High King Gilgalad and Doogie Elrond are not real happy with Galadriel, but she keeps deflecting. It's not my fault. I was deceived. But we still should use the rings. Power! <laughs> Power! Um, I mean, they will help us defeat Sauron. And of course, at every opportunity, Galadriel puts every man she encounters in his place. Even when High King Gilgalad is saying... I'm not real happy with you. You're on thin ice with me. By rights, I should be banishing you. She still has to come back and be like, I'm right, you're wrong. By the end of episode three, Doogie Elrond has become so disgusted with Galadriel, what she's done with the rings, 
her distortions, evasions, outright lies and manipulations, that when she comes to him and says, please help me do evil for me, he says, take a hike, get out of here. And the show wants us to think that Doogie Elrond is the jerk. At the beginning of episode four, Doogie Elrond has agreed against his better judgment to help Galadriel. Reason why she wants him? High King Gilgalad has said she can't go on the mission unless Doogie Elrond is in charge. Uh-oh, we can't show a man in a position of power over a woman. So we immediately have to show, regardless of whatever the official status is, that the woman is really the one in charge. Galadriel starts undermining and undercutting Doogie Elrond's authority from the start. They should listen to Galadriel, do what she wants, because she's right, obviously. Doogie Elrond, the only reason why he doesn't listen to Galadriel is because he's an arrogant, stubborn man who's threatened by a strong, powerful, independent woman. And it's Doogie Elrond's arrogance and stubbornness that gets them into trouble, obviously. Every decision that Doogie Elrond makes, Galadriel publicly and loudly challenges, usually in front of everyone. This is a classic example of writers being blinded by their own ideology. The writers think they're portraying Galadriel as strong, powerful, independent, superior to Doogie Elrond in every way. In reality, Galadriel is just an insubordinate, smug, condescending, self-righteous narcissist desperately trying to convince everybody she's better than them. The writers of the Rings of Power do not understand leadership. You never want to have the reputation for publicly undermining the authority of a leader, like the writers are doing with Galadriel. When Doogie Elrond has to make an important decision, he can't listen to Galadriel, even if she is right. And you know she is. If Doogie Elrond were to take Galadriel's advice, she would become the de facto leader of the group. Doogie Elrond would lose all authority. But the writers just can't leave well enough alone. Doogie Elrond says, it's my responsibility to make this decision. Galadriel smugly replies, but I care more about the lives of everybody in this party. Take that, Doogie Elrond. What a burn. Doogie Elrond is in command of a military expedition. He should care about the lives of the people under him, but that's not his priority. His priority is accomplishing the mission, ideally with as little loss of life as possible. But if the mission is important enough, everybody in the group, including Doogie Elrond, are expendable. On the surface, Galadriel's comments that I care more about lives than Doogie Elrond proves her moral superiority. In context, Galadriel's comments are irrelevant. It's empty virtue signaling, further proving Galadriel has no business being in charge. All of this is moot. Because the first time the party encounters danger, Galadriel immediately assumes command. The whole party automatically accepts her authority, including Doogie Elrond, who immediately becomes second fiddle. Galadriel was in charge all along. Doogie Elrond was just being a petulant man-child, refusing to accept the obvious. Hey, wait a minute. What about the orders of High King Gilgalad? The only reason why Galadriel's on this little journey in the first place is because High King Gilgalad ordered Doogie Elrond to be in charge. Screw that chump. He's just a man. He doesn't understand. Galadriel's right. He's just going to have to come to terms with that. That is, if he can get past his insecurities, being threatened by a strong, powerful, independent woman who in reality he would have executed for defying her liege lord. At the end of the episode, Galadriel et El are discovered by the orcs. Galadriel announces, I will stay behind. Delay the orcs while you escape. Wow, it's hard to talk like that. Everybody, including Doogie Oron, says, Works for us. See, you wouldn't want to be ya. And they leave skid marks getting the hell out of Dodge. Oh, the heroicism, the self-sacrifice, the pathos, the stupidity. First off, 
Galadriel didn't have the right to make that decision. It was Doogie Elrond's call. But then again, intersectional theory, Galadriel has to make the decision because woman. And then there's the really stupid part. The commander of the Northern Armies would never be put in a position to where she could be captured by the enemy. They might want to get their hands on her. For, I don't know, maybe she might have some military secrets? For that matter, the commander of the Northern Armies would never be allowed to run around the woods with just another half dozen elves. Stupid! Then again, if Galadriel wasn't running around the woods, we would have never gotten the triumphant return of Galadriel. Galadriel's going through orcs like a hillbilly goes through funnel cakes on the 4th of July. Galadriel is stacking orc bodies like cordwood. She even does her patented ducking a sword on the back of a horse routine. Here's my problem. I've seen a woman, Valkyrie, take on a man. I've seen her take on multiple men and do more than hold her own. There are badass women who can fight men. Morphid Clark ain't one of them. Morphid Clark having the ability to defeat one man is already pushing the bounds of credulity. This scene isn't badass. It's a parody. It should have been put in Robin Hood Men in Tights. The episode ends with the very thing happening why they would have never allowed the commander of the Northern Armies to be put in that position in the first place. Guy Ladriel was taken alive. We've already seen in the trailer for season two, Galadriel put in a cage. I'm going to make a prediction. In season one, we saw Galadriel, a parody of masculine power. So far in the first three and three quarters episodes of season two, we've seen a feminine parody of Galadriel. At the end of episode four, we had a brief return of Galadriel. In episode 5, we're going to see the complete humiliation of feminine Galadriel. At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about, and until next time, you all be safe. If you all are still here, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time. And feel free to share this video far and wide. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.